up until now, all we've done with radicals is we've simplified radicals, and we've simplified radicals in all the different ways of actual math. So we added and subtracted radicals, we multiplied radicals, and we divided radicals. That's all we've done so far. We did basic simplification like grade 10. Then we added, multiplied, divided. That's all we've done. That's it. Nothing crazy. Okay? The last lesson we're going to go over is solving radicals. Now, we couldn't solve before because actually every single thing I gave you didn't have an equal sign in it. Right? I would say simplify this. And the question didn't have an equal sign, did it? It was just simplify. So that's actually not an equation. That's an expression. An equation has an equal sign in it. So the actual typed question that I typed for you has an equal sign in it. Then it's an equation. If the actual type question I give you doesn't have an equal sign, it's an expression. And expressions, all you can do with them is simplify them. Make them look better. That's it. But with an equation, there's going to be an equal sign in the typed part, right? And I'm going to say solve. I'm not going to say simplify. I'm going to say solve. So this is something you need to know. It's going to come up in grade 11. It's going to come in grade 12. And any math you do after that. The moment it says solve, or the moment that there's an equal sign, what we need in the end is variable equals number. Like x equals 7. x equals negative 2. That's what we're looking for. So when your question says solve, or your question has an equal sign in it, your answer is going to be variable equals number. Okay? Doesn't matter what unit we're in this year, what unit we're in in grade 11 this year or in grade 12 next year. If it says solve, in the end, I need variable equals number box. That's what I'm looking for. Okay? So, this one here is solve problems with radical equations or solving radical equations. So this is, we're going to look through, we're going to see how we would solve one. You put your pencil down, you're not writing anything, you're just watching. So, this would be the original question that was given to us. And I would say solve. So hey, I have an equal sign, I have a variable. I know that in the end, I'm going to do some crap, some stuff, and in the end I'm going to have x equals something, box. Right? That's what, that's what it means when it says solve. You're going to do some math, x equals something. Right? So if in the end of this question you don't have x equals something, you didn't solve it. So that's what I'm ultimately looking for. So, when you have a single radical, your first step is going to be to isolate the radical. These are in steps 1, 2, 3, 4, they're labeled. So we're going to isolate the radical. So currently, my rad isolate the radical means get it by itself, make it lonely, okay? So we have root 4x, it has a friend right now. It's not allowed to. You have to move its friend away from it, okay? So we're going to add root 7 over. Add root 7. Add 7 over. We add 7 over, they cancel, and now I have root 4x equals 20. We agree? So the first step is make that radical lonely. Isolate it. The second step is to eliminate the root. So for a square root, raise both sides of the equation to an exponent of 2. So how do we get rid of a square root? We square it. Squaring the square root, make sure your phones are away and you're paying attention. When you square a square root, the square root cancels off. Right, Amelia? Yes. It's not working for me. There we go. And then when we square this one, we're going to get 400. So we're going to get 4x equals 400. So that was our second step. Get rid of that radical. Our third step is isolate the variable. So how do I get it by itself? Divide by 4. And then x equals 100. And you think you're done because you boxed it. The catch is, is that sometimes you get an answer, but when you plug it in, it doesn't actually work. That answer exists but in, in actual algebra, but doesn't exist on the graph. So then you would say extraneous. It's extraneous. Now, the only way that's possible to find out if it is or isn't is you plug it back into the original. And you check it, like you've been taught to check since junior high. So you check an equation. So what does that mean? You rewrite the original. So root 4x minus 7 equals 13. I rewrite my original. We agree? And I'm checking x equals 100 and seeing if it works. So what do I do? My next step is to plug that in. So I get 4 times, I put 100 in for my x minus 7, and it should equal 13. Correct? Then I keep going. This one's all done. So 
Anything on the left stays on the left of the equal sign. Anything on the right stays on the right when you check. You can't move anything over. It's like there's an electric fence down here, and if you cross over, you're going to get zapped. So when you check, yeah, bad. When you're on the left, stay on the left. When you're on the right, stay on the right. So now I'm going to get root 400 minus 7 and see if it equals 13. Root 400 is 20. 20 minus 7, see if it equals 13. I get 13 equals 13. Do my left, does my left side equal my right side? Yes, so this is correct, and my answer is correct. I can box it, I can move on. Okay? So here it says, note for cube roots, you have to raise both sides to 3. To get rid of the cube root. That's it. That's the only difference. Okay? So we're going to flip over. So we're going to look at this one here. Example, to solve using the steps above, in each case, solve and state restrictions. Now this is what you're going to have to watch out. What can't be under a square root symbol? What number can't be under a square root symbol? One. One can be under. Square root of one is one. Negatives can't be, right? So we always have to state restrictions first. That's actually going to be our first step. So what do we have to do? We have to take what's under this square root sign, go up here and say y minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to what? Zero. Zero. You're right, because it can't be negative. And then we just solve for y. So what are we going to do? Add 1. So y has to be greater than or equal to 1. Done. That's it. Stated your restrictions. Because what's under your radical can't be negative. Right? Does that make sense? So you just take whatever's under your radical and set it greater than or equal to zero and solve for the variable. Now, what was my first step? What did I tell you you had to do? Make that square root lonely. Right? You have to isolate it. You, can't, you don't want to square now. If you square right now, you're going to have to foil this. Does anyone want to foil? No? If you're foiling, go. stop. Don't do that. So we're going to subtract the 7. Square root y minus 1 equals 13 minus 7, which is 6. So my first step is to isolate the radical, which I just did. Then what do I have to do? How do I get rid of this? It's the square root's my problem. Nope. How do you get rid of square root? It's the opposite of square rooting. Squaring. Yeah. So we're in a square. We square. The square cancels out the square root. We square. So now we're going to get y minus 1 equals 36. So my first step was to get the radical lonely. The second step is to square. The third step is to get now the variable lonely. What am I going to do? Plus, plus 1. Now people box it because they're happy, which you should be happy. But before you box it, what do you have to do? Check your answer. Always, always, always. When you solve, you should check your answer. For two reasons. This one it could be extraneous, but also if you check your answer, you know if you did it right or wrong, go back and try again, right? Or you feel really happy because it worked out. So you know you're good. So we're going to check. We're going to check y equals 37. We're going to have a right side and we're going to have a left side. On our right side, we have y minus 1, the square root of y minus 1, plus 7, equals 13. So what's on the left stays on the left. What's on the right stays on the right. There's an electric fence down the middle. When you check, you do not cross over. Okay? We just plug in, solve left side, plug in, solve right side, and see if they match. So we're going to get square root 37 minus 1 plus 7 equals 13. Square root of 37 minus 1 is the square root of 36 plus 7. And we keep e writing equals 13. Don't be lazy and drop that off the whole way down. You want to, left side's going to have to equal right side, right? The whole way down. Boom, 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 boom. 6 plus 7. 7 equals 13. Now, people will go check. 6 plus 7 equals 13. Now, you're saying that it equals. The only way you can prove it equals is when you say 13 equals 13. And how do you know? 
This is how I say you know your check is right. If my seven-year-old daughter can come up here and she can look at this and say, yep, those two match, mommy, we're golden. If my seven-year-old daughter comes up and she's like, six plus seven and 13, those aren't the same numbers, you're in trouble, okay? And my seven-year-old daughter probably could add six plus seven, so this is not a big example. A two-year-old, four-year-old, two-year-old might not know numbers. Four-year-old can't walk up here and say, she's getting older now, so it's not working so well because she could just actually do math, but let's pretend she's low. Four. Um, can't say this matches this, then you're in trouble. So could a four-year-old now say, does that look like that? Yes. So then the four-year-old has said to you, you're right. And then you can box your answer. All right? So don't go 6 plus 7 equals 13. Stop there and put a check mark. You have to have 13 equals 13. And we need to practice that because in trigonometry in 30-1, we're going to have to do trig proofs. And in trig proofs, you can't say cos over sine equals cotan. You don't know what that means. But for example, if I gave that to you right now, cos over sine equals cotan, you'd be like, I don't know. But if I went one more step and said cotan equals cotan, you'd be like, yeah, they match. So you have to make it so that anyone looking at it would know that they match. Okay? So you're going to do this box and go. So we're going to look at this one. The first thing I'm going to have to do is subtract one. Get the radical lonely. So we get square root 7x equals 14. Then I have to get rid of the square root. So I square. And I get 7x equals 14 squared is 196? Yeah. Okay. And divide by 7. And x equals 20 what? And we have to check it, right? I thought I pre boxed that. So I got a little box happening. Okay. So I'm going to go root 7 times 28 plus 1 equals 15. Uh, root 7 times 28 is that 224? Root 7 times 28 is 224. 226? 224? In order for this to work out, it's going to have to be 224. Is it 224? Oh, it's going to be, no, 198, 196, so it needs to be 14. I'm trying to make you 15. 196 plus 1, so it needs to be 14. The square root of 14, so that this works out. I'll bring this on. Then 15 equals 6. Okay, separate sheet of paper. negative 7 minus 4 root 2x minus 1 equals 17. I forgot to do one more. Go back. I forgot to do the, the restriction. So I'd have to go 7x has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? And I divide by 7. So x just has to be greater than or equal to 0. When's the only time my inequality sign flips? Does anyone remember? No, no, I heard someone whisper it and they were right, but I don't know who said it. Yes. So if you divide by a negative, the inequality sign would flip. So had this been a negative 7x, your inequality sign would flip. So when you divide by a negative, the inequality sign flips, right? Other than that, inequality signs are just like equal signs. That's the only thing that makes them different. All right. So, solve this one out. Try it out. What are we going to have to move first? 
Remember when you're remember when you're solving for a variable, you're doing reverse bed mass. So I know that negative seven needs to go, and I know that negative four needs to go. Which one has to go first? Seven. The seven. Because I need to do addition and subtraction movement first, then multiplication division movement. Remember when you're solving and you're isolating a variable, you're reverse bed massing. You're undoing what was done. So you have to move that seven first, then the four can multiply. Okay? Let's try it out. So the first thing we should have done, taken this out here and said, 2x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Because it can't be negative. can't have negatives underneath. We have to state our restrictions whenever there's a variable under a radical. And we're solving. And then we go, 2x has to be greater than or equal to 1. And then I divide by a positive 2, so my inequality sign does not flip. So x has to be greater than or equal to half. Which is helpful. And at the end, you actually have to check and see, hey, is my x greater than that? Or is it equal to it? So let's solve this out. So I'm going to get, I'm going to add 7. That gives me negative 4 root 2x minus 1 equals 24. Then I say to myself, I have to move the 4 or the root. The 4 is multiplication. The root is just an exponent. Which one happens first? We do reverse bed mass. Reverse bed mass. Multiplication. So to get rid of that by division. So then we get 2x minus 1 equals 6. Negative 6, sorry. Then we square it. When we square it, when we square a negative, what happens? It turns positive. Because negative 6 is actually negative 6 times negative 6, which is positive 36. So don't trust your calculator if you don't put it in brackets. If you don't put that in brackets and you go negative 6 squared, your calculator is going to tell you it's negative 36, which is not true. Anything squared means itself twice, right? Multiplied. So negative 6 times negative 6, positive 36. So I'm going to get 2x minus 1 equals 36. And then I'm going to add 1. And I get 2x equals 37. And this is where I said leave it as a fraction, right? 5 by 2, x equals 37 over 2. Before I box it, I need to check it. And I always plug it back into the typed version version out of your textbook, or the version on the test that you did not touch that was typed by me. That's where you always put your check back into. Nowhere have you, because you could have made an error somewhere, right? So I'm going to put it back into the blue equation, because that was the equation I gave you. So I'm going to go negative 7 minus 4 root 2 times 37 over 2 minus 1 equals 17. <clears throat> I have to do the square root first. So I go negative 7 minus 4 root 37 over 2 times 2. The 2's cancel. I just get 37 minus 1 equals 17. And I get minus 7 minus 4 root 36 equals 17. Negative 7 equals negative minus, minus 4 times 6 equals 17. Negative 7 minus 24 equals 17. Negative 31 equals 17. Is that true? No. no. Very not true, actually. Does that mean I made an error in my check? We always go back and check. We always make sure. We want, we want to go back and make sure we didn't er make an error. So I put my 37 over 2 in. It was a minus a minus sign. Yep, that's all good. It was a minus a 1. Yep, that's good. 37 um, over 2 times 2 is 37. Minus 1 is 36. Okay. Minus 7 minus 4 times 6. I didn't make an error, did I? So what you actually do is you go here. You circle it. You circle it, 
Uh, one didn't red. And you put a line through it, like that. So you show that algebraically it gives you that answer, but then after you have to say extraneous. And you have to do this a lot in grade 12. You might as well get used to it. Extraneous. Now people say, what if I spell it wrong? If, it, if I can sound it out to extraneous, and the diploma markers can, you're okay. If you write like extraterrestrial, it ain't working. Okay? Because I've had people like write like extraordinary, and I'm like, no, still not same thing. If extraneous is missing like the O, yeah, you get it, right? Um, but if you write something totally out to lunch, like extra awesome or something, it's not going to work. It's also not awesome. Okay. So, um, tomorrow we're going to practice a, if we don't get linears, but not today. So these are your homework questions. Ooh. That was aggressive. Page 300. And we should also check to make sure our answer, so the excess be greater than or equal to a half, which 37 over 2, is that greater than or equal to a half? Put 37 over 2 into your calculator as a decimal. You get like 13. What, what do you get? 19.5? 18.5. Is 18.5 greater than a half? Yeah. So this this was good for our restriction, right? Like it was it was a good answer for our restriction. It passed it. That's good. It didn't pass our check though. Okay? So even if it passed the restriction doesn't mean you're gonna get away without checking it. Alright. So page three hundred. Number three, A, C, four, and six, we did B, so six, A, C. I want you for every single one of these also to state restrictions, because that could be just a question I ask. State the restriction and not even make you answer it. And how do you state restrictions? You always set... Whatever's under the square root, whatever's here, you set that greater than or equal to zero, right? And the only time the inequality sign flips is if you divide by negative. Yeah. Yeah. 